pleasant good morning to everybody and may the grace and peace of god the father and our lord jesus christ be with you all on this blessed sunday morning um it's good to be coming to you all again from the word of god and i'm happy that god has given me the opportunity and the revelations to bring so many of these messages across the areas to you guys you know so i want to um, give you each and everybody a, a, a welcome you know even to those who may be seeing me for the first time you know and to acm you know um I give you all the thanks for all of the support that you all have been giving over the weeks you know and i ask you all to continue to remain steadfast in your faith and steadfast in your beliefs steadfast in your practices concerning our walk with jesus christ in your discipleship you know um i want to give thanks to the apostle um the various leaders in the ministry um so many members uh brother shamel you know we constantly praying for you all of those who have asked and sought prayer um brother peter from even abroad you know we our prayers are with you right and we believe that there is a healing in your life that healing has already taken place in your life in jesus almighty name you know and for all of those others who have called and requested prayer i want you all to know that that prayer line is consistently open you know um to receive your calls to receive your messages we have people here waiting to pray for you for whatever situation if you just need encouragement right if you need um um you need you need some help in whatever area healing you need some help in in in, in reconciliation and understanding some scripture it doesn't matter you give us a call shout us out you know we are here to to um to give that hand in whatever way necessary and possible you know um to those who you know uh are able to give to to what's any needy cause any needy families that because there are a lot of families still in need you know and looking out for um, assistance uh anything that you give all right it, it would be greatly appreciated it would be something that they never had amen so continue to give and support everybody knows how to get in contact with me right now and um as for the channel uh just press subscribe subscribe you know i'm asking that you all subscribe those who receive the videos and receive the the um the messages via youtube and, and elsewhere all right this morning is a glorious morning and um we continue to look into the word of the of, of god right the words of the bible which is the inherent word of god and it cannot be changed right it cannot be changed it should not be changed um you know this week i stress on on being obedient right and i began the week with um that area of obedience and disobedience in the in the garden of eden in the book of genesis that from the very beginning right from the very beginning um god said that obedience would lead to life and disobedience would lead to death all right um we spoke about adam being given just one 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 no one don't and that don't was not to eat from a certain tree and yet still he did you know and it, it applies to us in so many ways also there are things we have the freedom of everything you know we got the freedom of everything you know and um god says be obedient to the things that he has called us to and yet still just like adam we still are disobedient to so many things knowing fully well that disobedient leads to death and obedience leads to life amen so we gotta we gotta um understand that 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 god has put a lot of things in place even every ruler every government every principality upon the earth has been installed by god all right he is responsible for deposing and imposing kings for the installation and the removal of kings heads of government whatever have, have you he is in charge of it right so the the the, the rules and and that trickle down from them we have to be obedient to some of them okay i'm saying this and i hope that you understand where i'm coming from in in, in certain regards all right the uh, I have recognized that a lot of, of Christian people are falling um, to the a lot of theories and conspiracies. All right, 
I'm asking you because that's your right. If you wanna, if you wanna dwell and 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 and, and get um, deeply into those things, but I'm asking you that instead of spending all of that time trying to confuse yourself more and more, look into the word. Give time to the word of God. You know, spend time with with, with hearing God's voice rather than 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 we 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 uh, going to so many different mediums that it, it can be confusing and it is going to confuse your spirit as i said last week you got to be careful what you're putting into these entry points you know everything that you take in right is what you're going to eventually start to give out so if you spend more time listening to conspiracy theories that's exactly what you're going to speak all right and you won't give time to the word of God. So you got to spend more time in the word of God. So that is what you are going to speak. That is what is going to come out of you. What you fill yourself with is what is going to come out of you. All right? It's just like what you plant is what is going to grow. All right? And, you know, we went through that whole seed theory already. That what is planted is what is going to grow. You know? So ask you all to limit right what your intake is you know i had cause to speak to someone this week um well, one of my one of my kids and i was asking them you know are you reading the devotions and and they were telling me that you know they read some of it so you know there must be admonishment there must be admonishment because the day has 24 hours in it it has 24 hours in it a devotion may take about two to four minutes for the most out of this 24 hour period to read Right, of which if you are a very interested person and God is really speaking to you, you are going to take the same scriptures that you have seen and go back and, and, and look at it. Remember, the Bible is for reproof, correction, and instruction. Right, So you would look at it. So sometimes it may lead to, to more time, but that time really benefits you because what you are doing there is really seeking. You are studying to show yourself approved by God, and God is going to speak to you in that manner. All right. So if you cannot find time... To spend just a couple minutes reading devotion, but you are filling yourself with so many other things. The world is full of the, 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 the of so many other things. The areas are full of so many other silly things. So you'd rather fill your minds with silliness, with foolish things, with vanities, with things that the world that won't profit you any, rather than the word of God. People, we gotta get serious with this thing, right? We gotta get serious with this thing. The Bible says, "Study to show thyself approved by God." Right, a workman not to be ashamed, rightfully dividing the word of truth. Amen. In um second Timothy three sixteen, all scripture is given by God for inspiration. All scripture was given by God for man for inspiration, for reproof, for doctrine and, and correction. Amen. So we gotta know where we are. We gotta know where we are. A lot of people a lot of people, yes, they claim to love God. But they're not going to the to the Bible. They're not going to the Word of God. They're not they're not they're not paying attention to the Word of God. They're not seeking His face anymore. They're not praying. You know, a lot of you all do even on the psalm of prayers and prayers that communication with the Almighty Father. You know, just as you would have spoken to your Father, just as you speak, you see, you speak to Him. You you should let Him know your needs. You give Him thanks for the things that He has provided in your life. You know, and and this is the direction that we gotta go in. We gotta pay attention right now to our Christianity to our fellowship and our relationship with jesus christ you know that's an important thing right now all right amen okay um i want to i want to um, i want you all to turn to the book of isaiah let's let's um read two verses there i mean as is popular verses isaiah 46 chapter 46 verses 9 and 10 Okay, and the Bible says here in the book of Isaiah 46, verses 9 and 10. Remember the former things of old. Remember the former things of old, for I am God, and there is none else. I am God, and there is none like me. Declaring the end from the beginning, declaring the end from the beginning, and from ancient times the things that are not yet done. Right? From ancient times, the things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. And I will do all my pleasure. You know, and I give God thanks for these two verses here. Yeah. I want to tell you right now that our faith, right, and the words of the Bible are the only 
doctrinal book that is prophetically aligned to the times all right all the prophecies of the bible right will come true every single one as a matter of fact all have all they have uh, prophecies have already proven themselves in the bible it's the only book that speaks of the times that we are in right now prophetically all right no other book does that no other book does that there are so many different faiths i'm telling you i'm going to tell you this right now you you are not going to come back here right you are not gonna you are not gonna come back here as the same being or any other being i'm telling you that right you you, you your consciousness or whatever as you see as as they call it is not going to float off into the atmosphere okay um the universe is not going to absorb you okay the, these these things i mean there are things that that people who will launch you right now and and it, it, it it's not about feet it's not about god all right there's one god one god right and his son is jesus christ and that's where our salvation comes from okay and that is why this book and the words of this book and the words that are spoken in this book are prophetic and they are true and we can align them to right now at this present point in time we we we, we, we can look forward to the things of this book taking occurrence happening all right any other thing i mean there's only maybe one more faith that may more or less speak and it's an abrahamic aligned faith also but there is where 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 um jesus right and his deity is not um acknowledged all right and for that cause all right i mean the bible says in 1 Timothy 3 16 and without controversy great is the mystery of godliness all right and it, it, it brings together the father the son and the holy spirit as one right great is the mystery of godliness okay it is not for you to understand or to try to work it out it is what it is right the father the son and the holy spirit okay jesus christ who is our salvation he died so that we can live god made it that way because he had to provide an entrance for us into heaven into holiness into into, into everlasting life into mortality into immortality he had to provide us that we are not we that though we was jesus christ all right um so there, there are no faiths and any faith that doesn't align with christ and calls themselves christian it, it, it is neither here nor there that 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 also isn't is an incorrect thing all right that's an incorrect thing how can you not believe in who jesus is and the deity of jesus and believe in your salvation when the bible says that in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god all right so you are saying that he is not god but then you believe in his salvation and you believe in john 16 for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life you all need to check yourself everyone needs to check themselves the word of of, of god is true and pure right take it as it is literally okay god is god right the king of kings the lord of lords the father the son the holy spirit amen hallelujah god yeah so there there, there is no other faith that um the the words or there there is no prophecy the other faiths they don't have any prophecy that can align to the times that we are in that can align to anything that has happened or gone in the world before none of them none of them you check it they, they they don't they don't speak of a rapture they don't speak of they don't speak of of of, of um of global warming they don't speak of the frequency and intensity of events to come famines rumors of wars pestilence sickness disease they don't they don't speak of the coming of a one world order they don't speak of the coming of of of, of um, um receiving a mark they don't speak of the coming of of, of a war between good and evil the demons and the angels the devil and christ they don't speak of it they don't speak of an uh, of an image of the of the triune god here on the earth with, with the antichrist the false prophet and the devil they don't speak of it all right and and for this reason and for this cause the bible and its validity will stand the word of god is valid 
right and it needs to be looked upon right now okay it needs to be looked upon it needs to be preached we as christians right now should not worry ourselves or concern ourselves or plan for foolish festivities right now is a time that we need to take the word of god out there in a radical manner in a radical tune this is the last march understand what i'm telling you this is the last march which means that we have to make a radical drive for christ a radical drive for jesus to get that word out there so that people can receive the truth and understand the truth and come to christ and receive salvation this is what it's about now as much as what is going on in the world out there today right a lot of people are uh, 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 looking for something they are looking for, for for something they're trying to understand what salvation is you know a lot of them crying out to a god that they don't even know and understand they're crying out to a god that they don't even know and understand and that's where you come in that's where the words of this bible comes in that's where you now have to take that word you have to preach the gospel you have to speak the gospel bring to their understanding just like how the eunuch was traveling and the eunuch was traveling he was reading isaiah and he said how can i understand this let some man explain this to me right acts 8 you know and the spirit filled philip and philip ran alongside the chariot and he was able to explain to the eunuch who at that point in time immediately immediately understood what is salvation entail and how to acquire it and he said what what do you know it mean what do you know it now from 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 baptizing me you know and and there are a lot of people out there right now hearing receiving and, and but you need to clarify we need to clarify certain things to them and let them know that their salvation lies in jesus christ that's where salvation lies you know in christ being messiah the savior of the world all right hallelujah amen um i mean a lot of things a lot of things a lot of things a lot of things you know uh let's look at, at the book of revelation for a second i think we'll be we'll be doing some um, some some reading from the book of revelation but the first thing i want you to read in the book of revelation or from the book of revelation is revelation 1 chapter 2. as a matter of fact we read from verses 1 to 3. All right. The revelation and revelation means the unveiling of what was previously hidden. All right? You can write that down. I mean, the first thing you gotta be doing while we're going through these things is just get your pen and your papers ready. All right? And revelation means the revealing, the unveiling of what was previously hidden. All right? And this is the revelation of Jesus Christ. All right? chapter 1 verse 1 we're going to verse 2 the revelation of jesus christ which god gave unto him to shew unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass and he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant john who bear record of the word of god and of the testimony of jesus christ and of all things that he saw Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written then for the time is at hand. I want you to repeat verses two with me. Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein for the time is at hand. Blessed is he that readeth. Blessed are you who readeth the words of and hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written there for the time is at hand blessed are you the first thing that god does when you read the book of revelation is store blessing upon you all right book of revelation is the last book of the bible but it needs to be a need particular attention to be paid to the words of it and you have to understand it god speaks to the churches god speaks to the people he speaks of the end time um, um of, of, of things that are going to take place right about the apocalypse he speaks about the new jerusalem the new heaven and the earth he speaks about the lamb that has been slain right and that our salvation is in jesus christ 
All right, only in Jesus Christ. All right, it speaks of the deceptions that are going to take place in this end time, and I'm telling you, the end time is full of deception. There's, there's, there's deception everywhere. This, this, you see, the deceptiveness of it is going to look so, so comfortable to a lot of you all, and that's why you need God, and you need, you need the Word, and you need the Holy Spirit to start to show you, and and able to discern now what is right and what is wrong okay all right hallelujah lord um you know as we've been going through the book of ezekiel as we've been going through the book of ezekiel um we can we came across quite a lot of things quite a lot of things you know and and, and the, the book of ezekiel there are a lot of a lot of things that align with the book of revelation Right? There are a lot of things that will align with the book of Revelation. Um, Ezekiel had a scroll. Okay? Ezekiel had a scroll. Re I think that's Ezekiel chapter 2. In the book of Revelation, John had a scroll in chapter 10. Right? Ezekiel 10 and Revelation 8. Fire was poured out. Fire was poured out upon the earth. Alright? Um, in Ezekiel chapter nine there's a mark it speaks of a mark to be placed upon the people in revelation chapter seven and nine it speaks of a mark also right and also in verse in chapter 13 it speaks of a mark right i mean and, and all of these things that we have been going through in the book of ezekiel are things that we can align prophetically to the book of, of revelation and to this time this present time you know in the book of ezekiel i remember when i first the first message that i gave in the ezekiel message um at the end of it i told you that god was saying that that um you can go from having to have not in an instant and that change can be just like that all right change could could happen in a, in a flicker of a moment you know and we saw that happen with this with this whole thing that's going around the world right now you know um it spoke of it's what i told you all last week that god was literally making appearances and he's making appearances in so many lives right now you know the healing taking places there are revelation taking places the people are people are, are, are coming to god you know they are receiving the truth you know so so it can be aligned to everything that's happening in the world right now today all right um chapter chapter eight and seven you know remember we spoke about the buyer and the seller and how it's affecting the world's economy um it showed that the world's armies all the superpowers are powerless that is happening right now they are powerless um it shows that that your wealth the wealth of, of those who have wealth it meant nothing which means that that change is going to come about i mean we don't know when this is going to end right there's no one who can put a, an exact date and time on when this is going to end god is in control i want you to know that but look forward to a lot of changes a lot of changes are going to take place right um things that will will not be you know a lot of people a lot of uh, there are going to be a lot of new 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 people coming out from 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 the dust at the end of this you know the rich may not be rich anymore you know they, they may not be rich anymore as well as those who needed an opportunity are going to have that opportunity now you know change is going to take place the governments of the world are failing really I, and they are failing at what they are doing they can't they cannot they cannot they, they are not successful at what they are doing you know um they need to abide in god they need to abide in god they need to give themselves over to god and place the whole nation under under god under one god and not 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 a community of gods right and things are gonna they would see change they would see success if, if, it, if it's handled like that but we know that that is not gonna happen all right um it's, there's a lot of things that that coincide with what was taking place in ezekiel that we can uh, enter right now you know um that change and and then this mark all right we can see this mark in the book of ezekiel you can see this mark in the book of ezekiel in chapter 9 and we can see this mark in revelation as i said so let's let's turn to the book of ezekiel quite quickly now let's look at the mark for a little bit 
you know last week i was even telling you to you know be careful what your 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 place at the entry points and what's coming in what's coming in right i need you to remember that remember that be careful of what you intake is what you are going to give up ezekiel chapter chapter 9 right <clears throat> from verses 1 he cried also in mine ears with a loud voice, saying, Cause them that have charge over the city to draw near, every man with his destroying weapon in hand. Right? This is a continuation from chapter 8. So we know that God is speaking to Ezekiel. And behold, six men came from the way of the high gate, which lied towards the north, and every man a slaughter weapon in his hand. Every man a slaughter weapon. And one man among them was clothed with linen, with a writer's ink on by his side, and they went in and stood beside the brazen altar. All right? And the glory of the God of Israel was gone up from the cherub whereupon he was to the threshold of the house. And he called to the man clothed with the linen, which had the writer's ink on by his side. And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and, and you need to look at this, set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. Okay? And to the others he said in mine hearing, Go ye after him through the city, and smite. Let not your eyes spare, nor have pity. Slay utterly, listen, old and young, both maids and little children, and women, but come not near any man upon, upon whom is the mark, and begin at my sanctuary. Then they began at the ancient men which will be for the house all right god god God's, ezekiel speaks of a mark a mark to be placed on those that sigh and cry for the abominations that were taking place in the land god god is placing a mark god has already placed a mark on the believer remember everything depends on if you do or if you don't if you <clears throat> if you do not eat you 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 can live in a garden if you don't if, if, if you do you you are disobedient you got a problem moses in, in 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 the very popular deuteronomy 28 says if you do the things that i command you today blessed shall you be in the city and blessed shall you be and if you don't these curses shall fall upon you it's all about if you do and if you don't all right so if you believe in jesus christ who is your lord and who is your savior then you receive the mark right you the holy spirit and dwells within you and you have received the mark all right so then if you receive the mark just as it is here the the instruction is that you are not to be harmed you are not to be harmed understand what i'm telling you you are not to be harmed now let's look at, let's look at revelation revelation 7 and 9 because they, they both would, would, would have. Let's look at Revelation 7 and 9. Now, the book of Revelation speaks of the mark in three areas, right? Revelation 7, chapter 2. <clears throat> Let's read verses 1 and 2. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of God in their foreheads. Okay? Revelation 9, chapter 4, verses 4. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. No, I'm not telling you that you are one of the 144,000, eh? right? I'm not telling you that. We have to understand what the dispensation is. We believe in the, in the premillennium dispensation, which means that if you if you are here to witness these things, you won't caught in the rapture. You, do, you didn't leave here in the rapture, right? The rapture has to take place. The rapture will remove you from the face of the earth, and there are seven years of tribulation to take place, and then Christ will come again for a reign of a million years with his believers. Okay, <clears throat> all right. The earth is going to be thrown into a total upset. Right now, we are in the church age, right? The tribulation period is after the church age. 
the believers in Christ shall be removed from the face of the earth. The Holy Spirit will be removed from the face of the earth, right? And it will be an, a, a time of right out turmoil, right out distressing. Men are going to want to die and they will not die. That's to tell you how bad it's going to be, all right? And during the three and a half years, um, the, the, the Antichrist is going to break a treaty, right? And it's going to cause a whole lot of... A lot of it, it's going to be a terrible time, but you will not be here as a believer in Christ. That is, this is the only guarantee, right, that you will have, that you are going to be removed from. So, so what I'm trying to tell you to is to believe in Jesus right now. To believe in Jesus right now and what he did for you, right, what he has done for us. He died so that we can live. He died so that we can live. The gospel is that Jesus Christ died, he was buried, and he rose again. Believe in that. Believe in what Christ did. Believe in it. All right? He is our only way to be saved. That is our only door into the ark. That is Jesus Christ. He is the new covenant. All right? For him that believed in me, he gave them the power to become the sons of God. All right? Jesus Christ is the only way to be saved. All right, from all of this peril, from all of this hurt that is about to come on the earth, from all of this tribulation that's about to come upon the earth, you got to believe in the power and what Christ has done. Amen. Hallelujah. I can't stress it enough. I can keep saying it all day long. You have to believe in the power of the gospel and the power of what God has done, the power of what Jesus has done for you. The, the verses are so popular. Things are being said. It's in the atmosphere. God has placed it in the atmosphere. You know, and as many as hear it, right, and receive it, He gave them the power to become the sons of God. All right, you are an heir to, of Christ, which means that the kingdom you are, you are, you, you, you are afforded the privileges of an heir to inherit the kingdom. You, you, you understand what I'm saying? So now is the time. Now is the time. You've got to believe in Jesus. You've got to believe in Jesus. You know, um, and the thing is, you know, a lot, a lot of people are gonna come, but a lot of people are gonna reject. That's the truth. That's the truth. A lot of people are hearing, and that conviction is right there, but for some reason, they still are not going to connect, you know, because as much as there is going to be acceptance, there are, there's going to be a lot of, of rejection. There's going to be a lot of rejection, that rejection is going to lead to death. That's why I told you, it's an if you do, and if you don't, right? If you do, it's because you're obedient. If you don't, it's because you're disobedient. The Bible speaks of two kinds of people in the New Testament, and this is what we got to understand to the believer and the unbeliever. The unbeliever is going to face the wrath. All right? He has no chance. No chance. The only opportunity and chance you have to get into the safety of eternal life, immortality, and, and, and not go to hell because hell is real. This is another thing that preachers ain't preaching about. Hell is real. All right? The devil is real. And second coming of Christ is even more real, all right, to retrieve his people. So, 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 you know, all of these things we gotta, we gotta learn, we gotta understand, we gotta hear, right? It's got to be taught. Right now is the time that you gotta let people know that there are serious consequences to their actions. This is not a time. This is not a time to 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 to, to, to be coming around with any 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 trivial or of vain type of, 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 of preaching. This is a time that we have to let the people know that their actions are going to have consequences. There are going to be consequences to their actions. All right? It's either you believe or you don't believe. But to receive salvation, to be saved, is to receive and understand what Jesus did for you and he died so that you can live. Right, so people gotta get this. This has, this has to be radical right now. Every Christian, every disciple, Christian follower of Jesus has to preach the same message, and that is that you need Jesus in your life to be saved. Amen. Hallelujah. People, people, we, we gotta come away from from all of the all the trivial things and the, and the thing. We gotta come to pure Christianity, pure Christ, pure Word of God. It's gotta be pure. All right, because 
God, God is seeking a people, and and He is He is almost ready to retrieve His people. Remember, I, I was telling you last week about the bird pangs and the delivery, and you know it's like a woman in contraction, and the pain is gonna get more intense until she delivers. When it comes, the same thing with the bird pangs that the earth is going through. Rumors of wars, wars, famines, earthquakes, pestilence. These things are going to intensify until it delivers, and we are the babe that Christ is coming for. It, this, the delivery is us. Delivery is us, the believers. All right. So, so you gotta, you gotta let people know where they are, where they stand. All right. Let them know that the only doorway into the ark is Jesus Christ. There is one door, and when God shuts that door, it will not be open. It will not be open. So we gotta, we gotta, we gotta rise to that. To this, a lot of people gonna get a plan for a plan that is in existence. God has already given you the plan. Go ye into the world and preach the gospel. Preach it. All right. You gotta get that word out there. All right. Jesus is what is gonna save you right now. You know. And and as I was telling you, I mean, I mean, there are a lot of alignments. You know, the Bible. You know, the other the other area where the mark is spoken of is Revelation thirteen. Revelation thirteen and Revelation thirteen is a chapter that you need to really look at. If you don't understand, get with somebody who can explain it to you. All right. But Revelation 13. Let's look at verses 17. Let's look at verses 17. And it says, And that no man buy or sell, save he that had the mark. Another mark we're speaking about there. So Revelation speaks of two marks. A mark that will protect and a mark that is going to is going to represent the beast. Right now, this beast. When you look at when you look at, at at verses seven in the same Revelation thirteen, here what it says, and it was given unto him to make war with the saints, with the saints, and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. What does that mean? There will be one ruler of the governments of the earth. Right? You ain't. This ain't no conspiracy theory that we're talking here, or that I'm showing you here right now. This is biblical truth. So don't let nobody come at you and tell you about a conspiracy where it has already been revealed to us. Right? That we know that the, the Bible says. The Bible says, and he that causes all both small and great rich and poor free and born to receive a mark in their foot, and therefore that no man may buy or sell. These things are not conspiracies. These things are revelations of Jesus Christ. These are not conspiracies. Do not lend yourself to conspiracy theories. Right? Give yourself over to the word of God and He's going to give you pure understanding on all things. Alright? These things are not conspiracy theories. These things, as I said, are the revelation of Jesus Christ. He already told us that these things are going to happen. That the world is going to come under one order. That they're going to seek to try to, to, to infuse religion. Right? We are separate from religion. We are believers in Jesus Christ. We are not to unify with any other faith. Any other faith. No way, no time. Right? There is one God. There is only one God. All right? There's a triune God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We are not to join with any other religion. We are holy and separate, set apart. Okay? There is no one world, there is no one religion for us. There is none. There is none. There is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Okay? We know all of these things that are going to come to pass. We know, we know we have been told. We know that there's sickness coming, famine coming. There are things that are going to come. There, 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 there's a whole lot of change that is going to come. Maybe things may come out of this as a result of what's going on in the world right now because economies are falling. All right? Economies are falling. World, the, 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 the world's communities and countries, they are going into, into, into an economic downturn. All right, globally, when we speak, this is not affecting Trinidad, it's not affecting the United States, it's not affecting England, it's not affecting um, um, Russia, it's not affecting Japan, it's not affecting China, it's affecting the globe. It's a global effect, it has a global effect, so the globe is going to be affected by it. And what it's showing is, is the incompetencies right now of the governments to take hold of, of, of a lot of these situations and, and, and heal the people. There is only one healing. That healing is Jesus Christ, right? We have, we have. It has been unveiled and revealed to us via the Word of God already. We know all what's going to happen. We know what to expect. 
And we know that if we have already received the seal and the mark of Jesus Christ, that we shall not be harmed. We shall not be harmed. God is responsible for what is going on, not no devil or no man. God is. He has already put things in place. Remember I told you even in Ezekiel, the things that you love is what God is going to use to destroy you. Amen? So we got to know where we are. We got to know where we are, people. And we got we to gotta preach the word, preach the gospel. It's the gospel that saves. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation. Gospel is the power of God unto salvation. To, to save, to offer mankind salvation, we got to preach the gospel. Hallelujah. No, no silly things. Let's come away from silliness. Let's move away from things that are silly and, 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 and tradition. The Bible says, be lest any man, be lest any man fool you with, with bring tradition and, and, and vain deceit and rudiment, the rudiments of this world. All right? Uh, uh, they, try to, they will try to deceive you. All right? The word of God is pure. Let's stick with the word of God. The word of God. All right? The word of God. All of these things that you think are, are conspiracy theories have already been revealed to us. Let's get into the book and understand it from the pure word from 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 the voice of God right from Jesus himself all right by the hand of God you know and and stay away from the conspiracy theories for God is real and his word is pure and true amen hallelujah lord so we know that the world is going to be thrown into a lot of turmoil right as it says here it says he's going to persecute the saints who are here people trust in God today all right this message was designed to let you all understand that there are alignments that 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 we have been that have been revealed to us and we know that that God is true and his word shall come true and this our faith is the only faith that 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 prophetically aligns with the times right now there's no other faith that does it and people you are reaching out for a God that is ready to receive you in Jesus says almighty name so with that i ask you all that we pray you know i pray for all of the families right and i ask god that he continues to guide to protect to cover to provide to keep us away from sickness and harm disease pestilence famine whatever every negative situation lord god because we have received your mark we we oh lord god are marked we, we we plead the blood the blood is is over our lives over our homes we plead the blood over our finances over our vehicles our travels our workplace our occupations god we thank you for all that you have done for all that you have revealed to us by your servants of god and pray that every man of god right now also hears god's voice and preaches a clear gospel another contrary message you know people i ask you to to hear the word of god to get deep in your bible and receive the truth in jesus almighty name now let me close with, with one thing um and it's in the book of ezekiel you know and it's ezekiel chapter 2 verses 9 and 10 and when i looked behold an hand was sent unto me and lo a rule of a book was therein and he spread it before me and it was written within and without and there was written their lamentations and mournings and woes. Yes, we know what, what is coming, right? Upon the disobedient people of the earth. All right? We are sure that it is going to happen. The Bible says so. The Bible says so. And the greater the rejection is, the closer we are to Christ receiving us. Believe that. The greater the rejection is, the more they reject, the closer our salvation is. All right, but the writer says here it was written within and without. You know, when it says it was written within and without, it means that every page, every area was written upon. Right? There were no omissions, so there is nowhere to include anything in the Word of God. And if anything is removed, you're gonna recognize it. You understand where I'm coming from? Yeah, I hope you understand where I'm coming from. There is no room to remove or include anything in the Word of God. It's complete. It is a complete word. It's a complete manuscript. It's a complete um, um, Bible. It's a, it's complete. All right. 
so when you when you have it there is no way that anything can be removed or inserted otherwise it's not true it becomes void amen hallelujah and i thank you for listening and i pray that god continues to bless your life until i see you again and i ask you to subscribe all right subscribe and i pray that god continues to move in your life remember the prayer lines are open the our areas for support to receive um, are open so contact us and we pray that god moves in your life and that a healing takes place in your life and your home is filled with an atmosphere of peace and joy in jesus almighty name amen